is our hope. He is our source. He is our everything. Amen? I have scripture that I was going to include in part of my uh, preaching today. But the truth is, as I was standing there worshiping God, the scripture that was going to be a part of my sermon jumped up to the forefront in my heart. And it was Hebrews 11.1 1 that says, Now faith. And I, I couldn't get past the now, the now part, amen, and the faith part. I mean, we all know it goes on and says, It's the substance of things hoped for, which obviously that was the theme in today's songs, the hope. God is our hope. Jesus is our hope. But the evidence of things not seen. But I started thinking about now faith. And I was going to pray for Wendy and pray for whoever at the end of the service. But then I started thinking about now faith. What is now faith? Now faith is move on it now. Amen. Now faith is actionable faith. It's faith that puts you in motion. Amen. It's faith that says, let's get going, amen. It's like saying, you take, it's like God taking God's hand or taking the Holy Spirit's hand and saying, I'm going to move forward, amen. And we're going to see God do something great and mighty. Now faith, faith that puts you moving, amen, that gets you motivated. I've been so motivated by God's word because why? It's now faith. Faith comes by what? Hearing the word of God. When you hear the word of God, amen, you start moving, I lay hands on my wife, I lay hands on Lisa, I lay hands on anybody in here because I believe God is a God of now and wants to move now. Man, I'm so glad she stood up and testified because I don't think about things like that sometimes. That how the pain revealed the source. For three weeks I watched her hurt and for three weeks we looked for answers. But then God said, boom, here it is. Now the pain's gone and we're going to get it well, Amen. But it's now faith. God, I trust you now to do what you say you're going to do. The scripture I shared last week, I trust him now to be our healer. Now to be our provider. Amen. Now we trust God. Why? Because he is our hope. Not because I see physical healing in her body yet. I haven't seen it happen, but I know that it's going to happen. My miracle's coming, man. Praise God. Help is on the way. Why have I played that song the last two weeks? Because it builds my faith and it help is on the way. Jesus is coming, amen? He's going to take care of us. But I have a hope. I don't know how people do it without Jesus. I don't know how. I don't know how, Lord. How do you get through... A diagnosis is without God. How do you do it? Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the plans I have for you. I've really read that scripture a lot this week. And I've I've preached this scripture before and I've got a lot more to go with what I'm saying today. But I've read this scripture a lot this week and that's kind of been on my mind. And I've asked God, as I say, for I know the plans I have for you. I think about that. God... Why does this have to be in our plans? Come on. I'm just being straight. He knows our plans. He knows what he has for us. He knows what's laid out before us. He knows the path we're on, amen? He knows what Wendy went through. He knows what I've been through. He knows what you've been through, Lisa. He knows what Miranda went through for three weeks, wondering what was going to happen. And anybody else in this room that has had something like that come up, he knows how we feel. He knows what we're going through. He knows the plans he has for us. And the more I thought about that, the wider my mind went. And I said, well, Lord, if you know the plans, then you know the reason behind why we're doing what we're doing. And you know the lives that are going to be touched by what's going on. And you know the people that are going to be impacted, amen, by what's going on. But why? Because the Bible says that God's plan is that all should be saved and none should perish, right? So if he has plans for us, it fits into that plan that all should be saved and none should perish. So I wonder who we're going to come in contact with in the midst of this trial that doesn't know Jesus, that doesn't have the answer that we have. Come on. I don't want her sick. I don't want her in pain. I don't want any one of y'all sick or in pain. I don't want to be, come on, I don't want to be, I'd rather me be sick than her. 
But she'd tell you I'm a bigger baby than she is. And she'd say, I eh, eh, ain't doing this. But what has God got in the plan? Because he says he knows the plan. He knows what he's got for us. He already sees. We just don't see it. But help is on the way. A miracle's coming. Something great and mighty's coming. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. What's your future here this morning? Your future is heaven, amen? Your hope has to be in eternity with Jesus. Because on this earth, we will have tribulation. We just will. But Jesus says, be a good cheer, amen? He's overcome. But my hope, amen, is in Jesus, is in eternity. My hope is that he will get us through everything we're going through. Because his plan is good. Sana told me again yesterday, Wendy, I still don't see the good in why Don had to go be with Jesus, her husband. And as she was crying, she said, but I know my God is good. And he said, she said, I know that my God has a plan. And I know in the midst of my hurt and tragedy, somehow God was glorified. And God was exalted. And she does, she said, I can't tell you what God did in that midst of that. But here's what I do know. I trust him. I will, I refuse to give up. I refuse to listen to the enemy to say, God put this on me and, and look how terrible it is. And look what, no. In the midst of my trial, in the midst of what I've been going through, I know my God is good. He has a plan for me. The plan lines up with his plan. It's that all should be saved and none should perish. And that he will receive glory in the midst of what's going on. So even in our battle, even when I don't like, trust me, I didn't sit there for three weeks going, man, I'm really glad, God, you had a plan for Wendy to hurt for three weeks. No, I'm going, God, heal her. God, touch her. God, give us an answer. But I listened to her a while ago testify and then I'm going to have to preach after her but I listen to her testify and I'm like she's right had she not hurt we would not have got an answer this could have gone on, gone on undetected for months and months and months but instead the pain got us moving the ball amen and now we got a pet scan that says there's only two spots I have a dear friend who just posted that her mother just had a pet scan and she's covered she hadn't been sick in my, her whole life, and now she's covered. And I'm praying for a miracle in her life. Even though it's to this point, God is still a healer, whether it be two spots or everywhere. But I didn't think about her. I only look at it like that. You know, God brought us to a place where we can deal with it. So, brother, a miracle can happen. Not that a miracle couldn't happen in her pain. But now we can specifically, we've documented, we have a bona fide documentation of what God's going to do. Oh, when it ain't there, amen? Oh, and when it ain't there, Lord, I can't wait for the doctor to say, well, I just don't know what happened. We must have just made a mistake. And I'm going to say, oh, no. Oh, no, my God. My God showed up and showed out. And there's no buts in God, but there is some buts in God. You say, but God. But God. But even if it doesn't go the way we want it to, He's still God. And He's going to have it. He's going to make it happen. But I read on this morning as I was getting up here, in those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me, this one says wholeheartedly, but the King James or New King James says, when you search for me with all your heart, you will find me. Sometimes in life we get so busy and so tied up with things going on, we almost treat our relationship like we do with our life. Everything's fast food and microwave. Come on. And so is our time with God. We're in such a hurry. 
Come on, guys. I'm just being real. I do it too. We're so busy. We give God the same treatment we give McDonald's. Come on. We just want to zip through, get what we got to get and go. We don't want to stop and spend no time there. But sometimes when God really wants us to slow down and have fellowship with him, he allows things to slow us down. Because God's desire for each one of us, and now listen, don't go home thinking Pastor Wayne said God makes us sick. It's not what I said. I said sometimes God allows things to happen in our life so that we will slow down and have fellowship with him, which is what he wants to begin with. Because I promise you this, I pray quite a bit, but the last few weeks I've prayed a whole lot. I wake up thinking about God. I wake up thinking about Wendy. I lay down at night thinking about God and thinking about, come on somebody. I'll, I think about what God is doing in the midst of this and what miracle God's given us and how God is faithful. And I just constantly meditate, as the scripture says, on what God is doing. And I know God's doing something mighty. But God has given me hope. I preached two weeks ago or three weeks ago on the promises of God. And I can't have hope without knowing the promises of God. I have hope because I know what God has said and I believe him. I don't just believe him for salvation this morning. I believe he's a healer. I believe he's a provider. Amen? I believe he sticks closer to us than a brother. Amen? I believe he's there in our stillness and I believe he's there in our busyness. Although sometimes we can't hear him in our busyness because we're all distracted. But God is there. God is there when you're lonely. You feel all by yourself. God, no one, no one knows what I'm going through. And he's there when a while ago we laid hands on Wendy and Lisa and came together as a family, a church family, and prayed. He's there too. But sometimes we don't feel him there. We don't see him working. We don't. Sometimes we just need God's comfort and God's peace. And like I said last week when I was preaching and I was sharing from that little book that, that I read, and I shared all those scriptures, my faith is in God. My faith that is in his word. And as you and I read his word, the hope that God has given us comes to life. And we go, wow, I get it now, Lord. Romans 15 and 13 says, I pray that God, the source of hope. What is God? He's the source of our hope. What do I have hope in? I have hope in God. I have hope in his word. I have hope in his promises. Amen? We'll fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with not just hope, confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Wayne, why did you have so much excitement the last couple of weeks? Why are you so excited at what God's doing today? Because I have confident hope through the Holy Spirit that he's going to do what he says he's going to do. Amen. He's going to do it. And there's going to be a miracle. Amen. God's going to do it. Hallelujah. But it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that that hope just not turned into hope, but it turned into confident hope. That word confident is also bold hope. Come on. I boldly know God's going to do what he says he's going to do. And when I get down in the dumps, and you do, I got brothers and sisters who are going to sit in the word and remind me of that hope and build that confidence back up again. It's funny how God works. This week, I did have a few moments where I was... I was battling a little bit. Let's be real. I mean, there's points when you deal with certain circumstances and you're like, Lord, I want to lay the hands of on them, get their attention. But then your phone goes off and it's Scripture, amen? And I'm like, wait a minute, Lord, I better pray for them. I don't need to choke them. How many in here know God's timing is perfect? I have a hope because he's my hope. He's my source of hope, but he's also my confident source of hope I know what God's doing Psalms 42 verse 11 why am I discouraged why is my heart so sad 
I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Why am I discouraged? The psalmist writes, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I ask that question and I read that scripture this morning because I want to ask us, why are we discouraged when we have a God who has promised to never leave us or never forsake us or never let us down? We are sad sometimes and we're disheartened sometimes because we allow the enemy to lie to us and tear us down. When the enemy, when we get bad news, the first thing we think of is the bad news and what the bad news could relate to. This morning, I want us to change that thinking. It's good, Pastor Dwayne used to call it stinking thinking. I want to change that stinking thinking. When we get bad news, I want to say, God has got this. Don't let it tear us down. Don't let it beat us down. Don't let it discourage us. Don't let it hinder us. Don't let us make, it, make us sad. Because our hope is in God. Isaiah 41 and 30, 40 and 31. But those who trust, that word trust is also hope. If you look at the, the translation, those who trust in the Lord, or you can read it, those who hope in the Lord will find new strength. How do you do what God's called you to do when you've got everything you think in the world coming against you? You find strength in your hope in God. God will give you the strength to make it happen. It says, they will soar high on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. How? Because God will give you strength. How are we going to get through this? Lisa, how are you going to get through with what's going on in life? God is going to give you strength. How is Wendy going to make it? God's going to give her strength. How am I going to deal with it? God's going to give me strength. Everything that comes up in our life, how are we going to do it? God's going to give us strength. He is my source. He is my hope. Not only my hope, but my confident hope that we're going to make this, and it's going to work, and it's going to be okay, and we're going to give him glory. Amen? Psalms 121, verse 7 says, The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go both now and forever. God never takes his eyes off us. Even when we feel like we're all alone. Amen? Even when we feel like it's, he's not listening, he never takes his eyes off of us. He sees us, he knows what we need, and he's there for us. All we have to do is call out for, to him. How many times do we pray in those three weeks? Every day, multiple times a day, crying out to God, God, where are you at? God, where are you at? God, where are you at? And I testify to this. When her pain level stopped, she prayed and asked God to come and sit down right beside her. I was laying there on the other side of the bed going, God, if we're going to fight this fight, we, she needs to get some rest. She needs to quit hurting. I didn't know she was praying, God, if you'll just sit down. Come on, somebody needs to try that sometimes. You're battling and you can't seem to get, get through or have a breakthrough. You need to ask God to come sit down right beside you. Come here, Lord, have a seat. Take up a seat beside me and let me talk about what's going on in my life. And let, not that he doesn't already know. Not that he doesn't already see. But hey, Lord, I'm going to invite you down to my circumstances. Come here. Sit down by me and see what I'm going through. Because right after she prayed that, and right after I prayed what I prayed, her pain broke. God's timing. But God did it. You say, well, pa Pastor Wayne, Wendy's taking pain medication. Well, yeah. But she took it for days and it didn't work. Are y'all hearing me? They pumped her full of so much delighted we could have made everybody in here happy. But it didn't stop her pain. That's my point. She took pain medicine for three more days. It didn't stop her pain. But then all of a sudden, the pain level went away. That is God. And to God be the glory. Amen? I give God the glory. I thank you, Lord, that you took away her pain. And I thank you, Lord, that we got a miracle coming. Hallelujah. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. I want you to hear this. I know y'all know this scripture this morning. But you may need to hear it even again. I think you do because I wrote it down. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all, who you, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Man, I had some heavy burdens over the last few weeks. And I tried and tried and tried to give them to the Lord. But every time I would lay them down, I'd pick them back up. 
You remember a few weeks ago when I preached about the baggage? I was doing exactly what I was telling y'all not to do. God, I know you're in control. I know I'm giving you these burdens and then take them home with me. I mean, I just wouldn't leave them. Then I came up on the scripture and I was reading it. It was actually popped up on my phone. I have an app on my phone that every hour the scripture pops up. Random scriptures. And if you don't have that on your phone, I recommend it because I promise you, they're not accidental. You may think, well, it's just random. No. I found out the last few weeks, this may be random according to that app. But God ain't random, amen. God knows what I need. And that scripture pops up. And I read it, and I'm like, I read it a hundred or a thousand, I don't know how many times. Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And then he said, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. And when I read that, I went, thank you, Jesus. I give you that yoke. I give you that burden. I give it to you, and I pick up yours, because I want the easy yoke. Come on. I don't want this burden. I don't want what's weighing me down. And God has given me peace. Ow, I just bit my tongue. Stupid devil. Ow. That hurt. I still have peace. Y'all laughing, but y'all go about y'all's tongue someday too. No. But it was so funny that when that scripture popped up, Hey, who's in here like that? You read a scripture a lot, and you've read it multiple times. Then all of a sudden you read it, and man, it's like, boom, it comes alive. And you're like, wow, I needed that. I've had, I've had some of you guys send me stuff on Facebook, and it just spoke to me instantly. Man, God, this, this was for me. Timing's perfect. I've read it a half a million times. I've heard people preach the same thing. I've heard pastors say the same thing. But it didn't sink in. Like y'all are here this morning and some of y'all are hearing what I'm saying. And man, you're absorbing it. Man, it's speaking to you. And some of y'all are dozing off. I'm not going to tell who you are, but you are. You're going to sleep. But some of it's speaking to you. And it's coming alive in you. And then later, you'll, some of you will get it. And then down the road, you'll come back and I'll go, wait a minute. I remember when Pastor Wayne said that, but it didn't speak to me like it did today. That's the same way with that scripture. I've heard pastors preach that scripture. But when it popped up on my phone this week, it was like, wow. Romans 5 verse 3 says, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For what we know that, ha- that they helped us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. Praise the Lord. How many know Jesus, our hope will not lead to disappointment? You're never going to be disappointed serving God. You will always have hope. He will always be there for you. And it says, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. Psalms 119 and 114. You are my refuge and my shield. Your word is my source of hope. Everybody say hope. I just want to make sure you're awake. Hope. Who is your hope in? Jesus, who is your hope in? His promises. Who is your hope in this morning? My hope's in the Lord, amen? As we're speaking Jesus and we're singing, I speak Jesus, tears running down my face because I know he's our hope. He's my power. He's my source. He's my everything. He's also my refuge and my shield, according to the Psalms, amen? And his word is the source of my hope. His word is my hope. You get in this word and you start reading his word, it builds your faith. And without the word, you will not have faith or your faith will become weak. But with the word, you become strong because you know there's victory. Amen? Hebrews 10, verse 23. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promises. Why do we have hope? Because God is going to do what he says he's going to do. Amen? He is the God who healeth. Amen? He is the God who delivers. Amen? He is our Savior. Amen? He is never going to leave us nor forsake us. We hold strong to his promises because he is going to do what he says he's going to do. He's always going to keep his promise. God is the only person that can be trusted. Amen? We trust him. Why? Because he won't let us down. 
Psalms 31, verse 24. So be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. My hope is in the Lord. My hope is not in this world. We're just passing through. I'm going to trust God to get me through this world. I'm going to trust God that He's going to shine through my life. But my hope is in Him in eternity, and that he will use me for this moment. That I'm, I said it in my prayer there. Lord, let me be a conduit for what you're doing in my life. Because I'm a mess, guys. I need the Holy Spirit. I need the power of the Holy Spirit. I need to let him work through me, because if I don't let him work through me, I will mess it up. Micah 7 and 7. As for me, I look to the Lord for help. I wait confidently for God to save me, and my God will certainly hear me why do I have hope in God because every time I pray every time I call out to God every time I ask him for something every time I just praise him and worship him I know God hears me I know that he's listening he's waiting on me to respond to him he's wanting to respond to me he's wanting to come into that bedroom and have a set down on that bed he is wanting to come into this house right now and have a set down with you and touch your life and change your life he is just waiting on you to call out to him who is ho- who's your hope this morning? I hope it's in Jesus. I don't know what you're going through this morning, but I hope you place your hope. I hope you placed your hope. That's pretty good. In Jesus, not in this world. Church, this world's going to let you down. Your fellow man will let you down. If you stay with me long enough, I will probably let you down. But Jesus, don't amen that. She was thinking about it. You can see her brain on her eye face and amen now. But Jesus will never let you down. Put your hope in perfection. Put your hope in the one who will never leave you, never forsake you, never let you down. Lamentations 3 verse 24 says, I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance, therefore I will hope in him. What does that mean? God has given us something. It's out there, that inheritance. That inheritance is not just for me, but it's for me and my children. My children's children, it's for you and your children's children, it's for everybody in this nation. God left us an inheritance, amen? But that inheritance is only good if we take claim and hold of it and claim it. You know how many people have inheritances floating around right now out there that are financial inheritance they've never laid hold of? There's a, quite a bit of that going on. You can't find the nearest heir and there's money floating around and someday it all pops up and gets... To, God left us an inheritance, Amen? And we know it's there. We need to gain, we need to claim it and, and gain control of it and say, Lord, I accept that inheritance in my life. My hope's in you. My hope's in your word. My hope's in eternity. Amen. Psalms 130 verse 5 says, I'm counting on the Lord. Yes, I'm counting on him. I have put my hope in his word. What's the, what are we talking about today? Hope. We talked about promises. We talked about healing. And now we're talking about hope. Because the promises of God are where my hope is. I believe him at his word. I trust it to be true. And I know that he's going to do what he says he's going to do. And now I go back to the scripture that I started with this morning. Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith, now faith, is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For it is by, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand the, that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Guys, this whole chapter, and I read this whole chapter this morning. When I was getting in here this morning, I read this whole chapter and I put it on my scripture because I thought I was going to read it all. But if you read each and every spot, each story, each scripture there, it shows where they placed their hope. My hope is not in this world. My hope is in God. Abel placed his faith or his hope in God. Are you getting that? By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and through it being dead, still speaks. By faith, by hope, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For therefore he was taken, he had this testimony, that he 
pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Faith. Faith. Hope. Why does that go together? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. Where does my faith come from? My faith comes from the Word of God where I place my hope in Jesus. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. And we can read on and on and on in every example. And I recommend that you do that. I could read it to you today, but I'm not. But I want you to read it. I want you to see where our forefathers, our founding fathers, placed their faith. In God, were they perfect? No. But they placed their faith in a perfect God who never let them down. And through their life, even in their mistakes, even in their miscomings or shortcomings, God shined through their life. Why? Because he, they had hope in Him and they had faith in Him. I end this morning with this thought. Who is your hope in this morning? If someone came to you today... And said, you know what, you look like you just came from church. And I don't know what that necessarily looks like, but because I don't normally look like I come from church, amen? But everybody has an opinion on what that looks like. But where's your hope? Why do you have hope in God? Why do you have hope in Jesus? Why do you have hope in the promises of His Word? The scripture tells us in 1 Peter 3 and 15, it said, Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. I end with this thought this morning. My hope is in God. My hope is in His Word. My hope is in His promises. But if somebody asks me why I have hope in this Word when I've never seen it, I've never seen God, I've only seen... God through you guys or through, you know, I've never seen God. Come on, we haven't seen God. But I look out in the world and I see God in everything. What's the scripture say? Creation calls there is a God. Come on, there's, I look out and see God. But why do I have hope in this word? Why is my faith in this word? Why when everything's going wrong in my life, or I feel like it is, I put my trust and faith in a God which I cannot see? And that is because because I have trusted God, He has sealed my heart with His Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit has placed inside of me a confident hope, as the Scripture says. And I can always stand on what God said to be true. And even when I feel defeated, and even when I feel like things are just going out of control, I can stop and back up and say, wait a minute, God, you have promised to never leave me nor forsake me. You have promised to be there in the midst of my trials. And I have hope in you. But what do you do when someone says, how do you get that hope? Where did you find that hope? Where did that hope come from in your life? You need to always be ready. Come on, be ready to say, this is what I know. You have a pastor Wayne, I can't tell, I don't, I'm not a good person when it comes to that. You've got to be ready. Because the world needs hope. We're in a world right now that needs hope. It's, what did my brother say a while ago when he was praying? It's spiraling out of control. It's a big mess and everything's going wrong. Our world needs hope. And I know the hope, and you know the hope, and his name is Jesus, and without Jesus, we have no hope. How are we going to make this happen? How's Winnie and I going to get through this? Don't go to sleep over me, baby. I see you getting sleepy over there. Don't get sleepy on me. How do we know we're going to make this? Because she and I have hope. We have hope in Jesus. I don't have hope in this world. I don't have hope in the oncologist. I don't have hope in that drug. God can use all of them. Come on, I'm not saying he can't. My hope is in completely in God through this whole process. And I'm only gonna, we're only going to see victory because our hope is in God. Amen? Last week as we closed, we had communion. This morning, I got here, and I did switch out the communion, by the way. The communion from last week is no longer the communion of this week. 
Everybody say amen. Because I gave y'all communion the one time that we used out of there, and it wasn't good. This is new communion. But when I came in this morning, and I even told Wendy, we're going to do communion again. Because I believe there's power in communion. Amen? Every time we take communion, we remember what Christ did for us. I love that sermon Hansi preached the last time he was here about how through the cross we have salvation and healing. And he laid that out so well. And Hansi was one of the guys that called me the last week and he reminded me of a lot of the things he said. Matter of fact, Hansi and I talked on the phone for nearly an hour. Couldn't get him off the phone. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I love yeah, it was not him. It's not him. It was me. I know. I know, baby. But as he was talking, he was, and he really was doing a lot of talking, which I'm glad. He was reminding me of that sermon and reminded me of how God has promised to take care of us and to heal us. And, uh, and ever since that moment, I just started going, Lord, I know you're going to heal Wendy. But I also said, I know you're going to heal my body. You're going to heal everybody that we pray for. Because that's what you want to do. He wants to heal us. I said last week or the week before, I said sometimes our healing comes because we get it in gear and start doing some things that are right. Come on. Sometimes we need a doctor. Sometimes we need medicine. Sometimes God gives us a miracle. But sometimes we need to just change some lifestyles. Amen? That's not always a popular preaching, but it's the truth. But today, as we close out, I want to invite our guys to come back and help me again. And I want to invite you to have communion with us again.